It's a wild but informative ride in tonight's preamble. Mostly Senate never Trumpers join their mostly socialist friends in an agreement in principle on so-called reforms in the wake of the Uvalde school, Texas, uh, Uvalde, Texas school shooting. The increased support for telehealth in this proposal, it did seem promising. However, the proposed support for red flag laws and the calls for spending more taxpayers' money should worry every American out there. If the red flag laws don't provide expedited due process and Congress wishes to raise our taxes to pay for their investments rather than diverting CRT and LGBTQ, ABCD, EFG resources to instead safeguard the lives of our children, then I can see me not supporting these reforms. Speaking of the LGBTQ, ABCD, EFG agenda, which is really the Democrat Marxist agenda using minority groups as a wedge, Fox News Channel is in hot water with its viewers, again, as part of Fox News' focus on what divides this country rather than what unites this country. The channel featured a story about an actual transgender child. I can verify that this child is a legitimate but exceedingly rare case of transgenderism because I, too, had interviewed this family on radio some years back. But I did the interview because I knew the parents and wanted them to be able to tell their story of this rare case. Fox, on the other hand, featured this transgendered child in celebration of Gay Pride Month. The child isn't gay. This non-thinking approach reminded me of something Bill Maher said a few weeks back. Yet when a book questioning the sudden uptick in transitioning children was released, a trans lawyer with the ACLU named Chase Strangio tweeted, stopping the circulation of this book and these ideas is 100% a hill I will die on. How very civil liberties of him. Chase, by the way, has just been named one of the grand marshals of this year's New York City Pride March, along with three other trans people and a lesbian. Huh, what's missing here? Oh, right, a gay man. That's where we are now. Gay men aren't hip enough for the gay pride parade. Anyone who knows about lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, queer, and there are more letters they've added since, but it's, it's all sophistry and division, so who cares? Anyone who knows about these folks, they all have different issues, and other than their common humanity, they have very little in common with each other, these groups. The only reason why they are all grouped and lumped in together is because Democrats need a voting block that they can cast as victims. These New victims are used in the same manner as Democrats used the old victims. They're used to push Democrats' Marxist tendencies and policies. It's sad to watch Fox News get so easily maneuvered into a Democrat scheme by ignoring the individual needs of these folks to deliver a collectivist message for political left-wing positioning. Hunter Biden, in the meantime, his ex-wife will break her silence on the Biden family in an upcoming interview. She's hawking a new book where she describes finding out that Hunter cheated on her with his brother's wife, the same brother who died of cancer. Great family, the Bidens. Speaking of the Bidens, Joe, the patriarch. The New York Times just openly fretted about how many Democrat lawmakers are concerned over Biden's lack of leadership. Some Democrats observe that the U.S. is, quote, falling apart. The New York Times report depicts Democrats as increasingly feeling sorry for the hapless and mentally compromised Joe Biden. On the other hand, CNN is reporting that President Donald J. Trump's numbers are on the rise. In fact, President Trump has become more popular since the January 6th Capitol riot, when a mere fraction of a peaceful protest broke away and perpetrated a timid version on the U.S. Capitol of what BLM and Antifa rioters had been doing to the United States for over two years. Liz Cheney and Adam Crying Kinsinger couldn't bring themselves to call for investigations when leftists killed cops, beat cops, burned down our neighborhoods, took over our neighborhoods, declaring themselves autonomous outside of the USA, or looted stores. But when a few hundred folks walked through the Capitol, harmed police officers, and broke some windows where Cheney and Kinsinger and other Democrats work, well, that's when they start moving heaven and earth. In truth, this kangaroo court is stacked with Trump haters and no defense for one reason and one reason only, to make sure America first policies are never implemented in this country again. That could be why Democrats' one-sided kangaroo court is one big tune-out for our country. The big three networks took it on the chin in the ratings. 
I guess when Americans are plagued with crime in the streets, rampant illegal immigration, record-breaking gas prices, empty store shelves, and can't even feed their baby's formula, Liz Cheney's little vendetta against President Trump seems rather trivial to real Americans. Oh, by the way, reports are now surfacing that Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi were told ahead of time about potential threats to the Capitol on January 6th. According to Just the News, FBI intelligence warnings that January 6th protesters might violently storm the Capitol, target lawmakers, and blockade Democrats in the tunnels was never sent to frontline police commanders and officers, but was quietly emailed the night before to a top aide to who? Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. The revelations raise new concerns that politics trumped security preparedness on January 6th. Speaking of Nancy Pelosi, why is she refusing to pass protections for the justices on the Supreme Court ahead of the Dobbs ruling that holds the fate of Roe versus Wade in its hands? After a crazed gunman was arrested saying he was going to kill Justice Brett Kavanaugh, the radical group Ruth sent us, sent out a little tweet, targeting people of faith, Justice Amy Coney Barrett, and her seven children. I guess targeting kids for intimidation meets Twitter's community standards. But some are openly questioning if the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, is delaying a vote because she wants harm to come to a sitting constitutional justice just so Biden can appoint another leftist who doesn't know what a woman is to the high court. It seems that Pelosi has an ally at the New York Times. They buried the story about the assassination attempt on Kavanaugh. That got Kellyanne Conway and Bill Maher's attention this weekend. The point is, I think your point, and I, the point I would agree with is, the New York Times buried this. Yeah, it was like if a this tiny had been thing a, below the fold. If this had been a liberal Supreme Court justice that someone came to kill, it would, have been on the, it would have been on the front page. And that's what's so disappointing about a paper like the New York Times. Because they just wear their bias on their sleeves. And they, if it's not part of something that feeds our narrative, f*** it. And there were protests it. in front of Amy Coney Barrett's house where we all know there were seven children inside. Yeah, seven children inside. These are just a few stories that paint an overall picture of chaos unfairness, debauchery, and lawlessness that comes to any nation that puts leftists in charge of any office, institution, or policy. The sad state of affairs in the United States is uniquely Democrat. What is not, or what it is not, is American.